9. Fake Russian Submarine In late 2014 and early 2015, worldwide concerns were raised over what appeared to be a Russian submarine lurking off the Swedish coast. Sweden's Minister of Defense later revealed, after a massive week-long search for the foreign vessels and a major upheaval over whether Sweden could abandon its non-alignment policy and join NATO, that the submarines actually belonged to Sweden and Germany. The bizarre situation was reminiscent of a similar incident that occurred during the 1980s, when alleged Soviet submarines were spotted near Sweden's borders. German screenwriter and film director Dirk Pullman admonished journalists for failing to thoroughly investigate the rumors. In his documentary, Deception, The Method of Reagan, Pullman argued that the submarines were not of Soviet origins, period but rather that the suspicious vessels were British and German. The most damning parts of the documentary were censored in Germany. When history appeared to repeat itself in recent years, Pullman was naturally one of the first people to call out the possibility that the West was fabricating what he described as the Eastern Threat. And as the interview with Sweden's defense minister proved, he was right once again. 8. Ukraine's Decoy Weapons since the dawn of warfare itself, militaries have relied on deception as a way to gain the upper hand against the enemy. This saves precious manpower, weapons, and other resources that are needed to strengthen the war effort elsewhere. The ongoing Russia-Ukraine war is no different. In September 2023, news sources reported that Ukrainian steelworkers are using scrap metal, wood, old tires, discarded boxes, and other materials that they usually throw away or recycle to fabricate phony weapons that are incredibly realistic looking. The dummy howitzers, radar systems, mortar launchers, and other fake weapon systems have proven useful for both distracting the Russians and causing them to waste ammunition by shooting at the replicas. According to news reports, more than 250 mock weapons have been manufactured by workers at Metinvest, Ukraine's biggest steel plant. These decoys have reportedly made a sizable dent in Russia's ammunition supply in certain areas. And they have also proven advantageous when it comes to distracting the enemy. This strategy is also extremely cost-effective, since it involves using scrap materials, decreases the amount of ammunition being used by Ukraine, and costs fewer lives. A chief at the Metinvest steel plant told the press that the fake weapon systems enabled Ukrainian forces to look bigger and stronger than they actually were, at a time when they were vastly outgunned by the Russians. The representative said that the strategy effectively scared off Russian forces, buying the Ukrainians some time to shore up their real manpower and equipment. 7. Quaker Guns During the American Revolution, forces under the command of Continental Army officer Colonel William Washington and British commander Lieutenant Colonel Bannister Tarleton engaged in prolonged, brutal warfare in the rugged wilderness of South Carolina. In October 1780, after nearly a year of fighting, Washington retreated to North Carolina. But dislodging the Loyalists would require either a clever ruse or more manpower and artillery than Washington had at his disposal. It was during this time that he ordered his cavalrymen to build the first ever Quaker gun, a pine log that was disguised to resemble a cannon. Quaker guns were commonly used in American warfare throughout the 18th and 19th centuries. They were popular during the Civil War. Both the Union and the Confederacy used the fake weapons, but the Confederate Army used them more often due to its consistent shortage of artillery. Confederate General Joseph E. Johnston has been remembered throughout history for his noteworthy use of Quaker guns. As his men were withdrawing from Centerville, Virginia in early 1862, he strategically placed Quaker guns around their camp to make it look as though it was still occupied. Southern forces in Mississippi also used the deceptive devices during the Siege of Corinth in May of that year to fool the Union Army while they stealthily moved their supplies, sick and wounded soldiers, and real artillery out of the area by train. Dummy cannons were also used by French commander André Massena, who placed them around city walls during the Siege of Genoa in 1800 as a way to confuse and distract the invading Austrian military. Quaker guns were simple yet life-saving devices. At the very least, they effectively stalled enemy forces and starved off an attack long enough to buy weakened units some time to get out of the danger zone. 
which is one of the reasons why the tried-and-true, age-old concept of using decoy weapons is still in practice today. 6. Camouflage Trees During World War I, the French, British, and Germans placed fake trees in the forest along their front lines. Camouflage trees were first used in 1915 by the French, who soon passed the idea along to the British, and the Germans caught on to the concept shortly thereafter. In many cases, the fake trees were replicas of real trees near the front line that had been damaged during battle. Engineers photographed and measured the destroyed tree, which was then recreated by artists using wrinkled and painted iron as bark along with textured materials such as pulverized shells, since, after all, a perfectly unharmed tree might look a little out of place. These replicas were extremely detailed and looked exactly like the real trees they were designed after, right down to their broken and intact branches. The process of creating them was time-consuming and complex, and it was carried out in complete secrecy. To avoid being spotted by the enemy, troops removed the real tree and installed the camouflage version under the cover of night. Each false tree was hollow and served as a spy station. They were lined with armored tubes to protect the soldier inside. There was a seat near the top of the trunk for the occupant to perch themselves on, as well as a cleverly disguised mesh viewing hole. The soldier would observe his surroundings through a periscope or telescope and report the details to troops on the ground. 5. The Ghost Army In early 1944, toward the final stages of World War II, the United States Army established its first-ever tactical deception unit. Nicknamed the Ghost Army, it was officially called the 23rd Headquarters Special Troops. Created by U.S. Army planners Ralph Ingersoll and Billy Harris, this top-secret unit consisted of 82 officers and 1,023 soldiers, who spent the final year of the war tricking the Germans into believing they were a 30,000-strong force. They accomplished this by using a variety of highly convincing visual, sonic, and radio deception tactics. Armed with only 50 caliber machine guns, these clever combat con artists carried out 22 large-scale deceptions against the Nazis. Due to the sophisticated nature of their missions, most of the Ghost Army's members had backgrounds in art or engineering, or were highly trained professional soldiers with advanced skills. With an average IQ of 119, they were one of the most intelligent military groups of all time. The Ghost Army's tactics included using inflatable tanks, jeeps, trucks, aircraft, and other vehicles that looked real fake radio traffic and sound effects, and deploying bogus generals who passed as legit military officials. These methods worked incredibly well, effectively saving thousands of lives while driving the Germans crazy with false leads. Their work was highly classified even after the war ended. Members of the Ghost Army were sworn to secrecy, and for decades, the military went to great lengths to conceal any sign of the unit. Its existence was finally revealed to the public in 1985, courtesy of a Smithsonian Magazine expose, and the matter was officially declassified in 1996, more than 50 years after the war's end. When the Ghost Army's existence was finally no longer a secret, former members became more comfortable with the idea of openly discussing their service. During an interview with Princeton Alumni Weekly's Rick Bayer, U.S. military veteran Freddie Fox described the Ghost Army as a traveling roadshow that went up and down the front lines impersonating the real fighting outfits. 4. Razzle Dazzle Camouflage Starting in the early 1900s, during World War I, the British began painting some of their warships in psychedelic, brightly colored patterns. Known as Razzle Dazzle Camouflage, it wasn't meant to hide targets, but to make them visually confusing to the enemy. In addition to featuring wild colors, Razzle Dazzle consisted of contrasting lines and shapes going in various directions. This made it difficult for an enemy to figure out important details such as the type of vessel, its size, or how fast it was going, and in what direction. Each Razzle Dazzle ship had a unique pattern and color scheme. One featured red, gray, black, and white angular shapes. Another had a curvy blue, black, and white design. There was also a zebra print ship, and one that was painted like a brick wall. Although the British started the razzle-dazzle trend, the Americans also used it. In 1904, the U.S. Navy launched the USS Nebraska, which had a contrasting chevron pattern on its hull and smokestacks. 
A dozen Navy warships were eventually covered in crazy patterns and colors. Razzle Dazzle reached its peak popularity during World War I, especially among the British Royal Navy. One newspaper reporter described the radically patterned warships as a flock of sea-going Easter eggs, while another referred to them as loading cubist paintings. Only a handful of these eye-popping ships survive today. 3. A ship disguised as an island. On February 27, 1942, the Allied naval fleet was defeated by the Japanese Imperial Navy in the Battle of the Java Sea. In the days following the crushing battle, the Japanese sank three of the four remaining Dutch ships in the Java Sea. The slow-moving, 184-foot-long, 25.6-meters minesweeper Kreinsen was the last remaining ship. It was lightly armored and therefore ill-equipped for battle, and floating in plain view of any Japanese aircraft or naval vessels that might pass by. The Kreinsen's best chance of survival was to flee from Japanese-occupied waters and toward Australia, except there was no way it could outrun a Japanese vessel. To sneak past the Japanese undetected, the crew of the Kreinsen came up with the unconventional idea of disguising the vessel as an island. The area contained over 1,800 small islands, and the ship was big enough to pass off as a small island, so the idea wasn't as far-fetched as it seemed. The 45-man crew stopped the ship at a nearby island, cut down as much vegetation as possible, and covered the vessel's entire surface area with foliage. They arranged the plants in a way that mimicked jungle vegetation and painted any exposed metal in shades of gray to resemble rock formations. The ruse was surprisingly convincing, especially from a distance. Since islands don't move, however, the ship had to be careful nonetheless. During the day, it anchored close to actual islands and remained stationary. At nighttime, Crinson painstakingly crept toward Australian waters, finally reaching safety after eight days as the only Dutch vessel of its class to escape the hostile zone of the Java Sea. 2. Dummy Tanks During the World Wars Dummy tanks are what they sound like, fake tanks that look real. The earliest examples were used during World War I by Allied forces, who built mock versions of British heavy tanks out of wood. Because their tracks were non-functional, the fake tanks were sometimes fitted with a hidden set of wheels and towed from place to place by horses. The Germans also built fake tanks, many of which were made to resemble Allied models, but it's unclear whether they were used as dummy weapons or for training. During World War II, both the Allied and Axis powers used mock tanks. The British are primarily credited with pioneering their use as a form of military deception, dubbed spoofs. The dummy tanks of this era first saw large-scale use during the North African Campaign in 1941. Between April and June of that year, the Royal Engineers built an average of two spoofs per day. Many of the mock tanks were mounted on jeep and truck frames, so they could be easily deployed. The Allies also used inflatable tanks, which were favored on the battlefield despite their tendency to be destroyed easily by enemy fire. Dummy tanks and amphibious landing craft were most famously used in the Allied invasion of Normandy, better known as D-Day. In addition to fake tanks, the Allies used dummy planes, ships, and even fake soldiers. The main purpose of these dummy vehicles was to make the Nazis think that the Allies had more of them than they actually did, and to distract the Germans by making it look like the Allies were about to invade a different location. In addition to using decoys in Western Europe, fake tanks were deployed in Eastern Europe, courtesy of the Red Army. Much like militaries elsewhere, their main goals were to increase their perceived tank numbers and distract the enemy from the movement of their real equipment. The Japanese military also used dummy tanks during World War II. During the Battle of Iwo Jima, one such decoy was surrounded by American forces, only for the soldiers to discover that it was a fake carved out of volcanic ash. 1. Modern Dummy Tanks Inflatable dummy tanks have worked so well throughout history as a deceptive warfare tactic that they're still in production and use today. According to some news sources, a Czech manufacturer that produces inflatable tanks and weapons is willing to send its products to Ukraine to aid in the fight against the invading Russian military. While it's unclear whether any of the products are currently in use by Ukrainian forces, Inflatech chief executive Vojtech Frezer told the National News in early 2023 that he would be willing to send inflatable decoys to an ally country that needed them. 
The company was founded in 2015 and currently makes 30 different types of mock weapons, including replicas of the American-built M1 Abrams tank, as well as a multiple rocket launcher known as the High Mobility Artillery Rocket System, or HIMARS. Six months after Frezer's interview with the news outlet, drone footage that was captured in Kiev appeared to show three inflatable replicas of Russian T-72 tanks operating in close proximity to one another. Russia has been known to use decoy tanks since long before the ongoing conflict, so it wouldn't be surprising if the country's military is currently using dummy weapons. Most recently, Russian forces were accused of using decoy tanks in the Zaporizhia region. For now, the war rages on. And while the dummy tanks are clearly a tried-and-true tactic being employed by both the Russian and Ukrainian militaries, it won't be enough on its own for either side to win the war. The outcome remains to be seen. Thanks for watching. Which one of these fake weapons do you fear the most? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.